Hello everyone, welcome back to Fibbleheim and Acolyte of the Altar. We are continuing the expansionism of the fabled card collection. And we're actually making a lot of progress, thanks to a bug in the small hotfix that unlocked quite a few of them for me for some reason. And uh, a very successful previous run as Mono Green, the Sylvans are nearing completion. But I thought that I would take a stab at my own old favorite mono deck, which is mono blue. The Sylvans kind of can do whatever they want, like they're jacks of all trades, and even masters of infestation. Maybe the other ones that can do that. But not even they can compare to the absolute shenaniganry of the blue deck. So we'll see if we can make it all come together today. Now, unfortunately, we are still dealing with a music bug. Where as we interact with the UI, the music volume will go down and down and down until it disappears. So today we are joined by a wonderful OST from Helltaker. The Helltaker OST is an absolute bop. It's incredible. I've discovered another bug as well. I'm not sure where I should be reporting this. But um, we're playing, as mentioned, with the greater and lesser patron of the Empiricists. Now, when I turn this on, everything is fine. We heal by two life after each combat instead of one, kind of giving us additional sustain because we might need that extra blanket of HP. But when I press this, you hear that high pitch sound? That's it being inter turned on over and over again. And the low pitch sound is the fire being turned on. Yeah, so I'm not sure what that is, but hopefully it goes away when I press this button. Can't even tell if it did. Let's just focus on the Helltaker soundtrack, shall we? So we are starting off against the Gilded Grifter. The Gilded Grifter is one of those characters you just kind of have to remember. Because the Grifter's game is constant. Disciple, Lamb, Chanting, Gildas. Disciple, Lamb, Chanting, Gildas. Disciple, Lamb, Chanting, Gildas. Disciple, Lamb, Chanting Geltus. Hmm. I think I'm gonna guess this one. <laughs> I guess it doesn't count the Forbidden card. Interesting. If you guess incorrectly, you take damage, I believe. If you choose correctly, you add the card to your hand, like we did. If you choose incorrectly, you take four. Four! Four damage! Yikes. Frauds are opening up every turn. These are single uh -oh, attacks. Boy, uh, that are going up the left of this minion, but now when work, the crowd is active, they go to my face. Being the empiricist that we are, we can actually kind of protect our HP with these temporary hit points. The fabled cards introduce a lot more temporary HP shenanigans, both in acquisition and in actually making use of it. Oh, hey, what's up, Masters and Rider? So we'll see what uh, we can see. Did I just rip a 4-4? Four, four? No. You know it's better than a 4-4? Four, four? A 6-6. Six, six. Kaboom. I love the Mastodon Rider. I'd like to try out his Vabled card today if we can. It's all going to come down to luck, but do remember, Lamb Cultus Koi. Lamb Cultus Koi. Lamb Cultus? Koi. Uh, do recall that since we are mono blue, we will only be offered empiricist choices. So there's a relatively good chance we will find one of those cards. Lamb, cultist, disciple. Lamb, cultist, disciple. Mecha. Lamb. Help this disciple. Oh, this is the forbidden card. I knew that. I knew that. Oh, hey. <laughs> Speak and ye shall be rewarded. So this is the Macedon Skinner, the fabled Macedon Rider. By mana 04, my attack is 
always equal to the number of cards you have in hand when a creature you summon dies, draw a card. This sounds fun. We also have Marilia the Mind Turner, which is a win con. And if I've learned anything from the previous run, it's that having a win con, like at the start of the run, pretty good idea. Marilia does have a, a fabled variant, but we already unlocked it because of shenanigans. That's four burden for the tiny hoof. Okay, fine. We'll just go Ancient Gong. Ancient Gong is exceptional, but I don't know how good it is for the Empiricist. Like, it's baller for both red and green with Ignition and Infestation. I'll rip the two mana one. Less utility. Get that out of here. I think my whole board's about to be wiped. Because this is the Unchained Earth Carver. And he has opened up Call the Weak, Titanic Strike, and Heavy Binding. He is going to kill everything with less than two hit points. Then he is going to attack something for five with Overkill. And then he is going to reduce my maximum mana by one. So this is an opportunity to play the Mana Pool Koi. Actually, I should have played... Should I have? I don't know. If I played the Mastodon Rider, I probably should have. Yeah. The Rider would have gone to 6 6 and eaten the Disciple and eaten all the Titanic Strike. Yeah, that was a misplay. Well, let's get these guys on the field. Make use of them while we can. At least we know for when this Titanic Strike opens. the end of the world, I hope. We do have Morelia, and I don't... I legitimately think this guy cannot kill Morelia. I think it's impossible. We swing, go after the Mastodon. Oh yeah, uh... Kid of us told me I can move these. Holy... Oh, I see you can move how they... Ah, you can order how they attack. Kind of. What's going on here? Can I not? I don't know. Anyway, let's... <laughs> enough fiddling with that. Um, Back to what I was debating earlier. We're going to eat this guy, bringing us to a 6-6. Six, six. Which will survive this Titanic Strength. Which will survive this Titanic Strike. Okay. Where can I move? I have to... I should have read the comment before I... <laughs> I responded to it hours ago. You can't expect me to remember now. Yeah, I'm not sure. Anyway. GG, question mark? Yep. GG. I didn't even get to play Marilia. Ah, well. She'll get her chance, I'm sure. You know, if I get that card that says 7 mana 7-7, seven, seven, that'd be pretty fun. So we have the Doppelgangers. The first time you cast a spell each turn, add a base copy of it with fading to your hand, it costs zero. This, I think, could be absolutely nuts. Now, as for our spells... They're really not that impressive. This is more of like a synergy with the other clans, I think. 
Also, the man with the goat head is absolutely goaded. Get it? But for the sake of unlocks, we'll take the, the emperor guy. Hurst, I don't think he's very good. But, hey. Ooh, nice, the chef. Perfect. A large man hunches over a thick metal pot. He has two tables on either side, piled with ingredients, some vermilion comforting, others that curdle the stomach from both appearance and scent. He will, of course, be taking the filling piece with the ancient gong. The filling feast. Hmm. We'll trigger twice. So that's plus 20 healing, plus 6 temporary hit points. Everyone say hello to the sickly serpent skin. This little sod is a gimmick boss, and I don't think I have ever actually defeated him. Wait, that's not true. Did I do that earlier in one of the previous videos? Recently-ish. Anyway, usually, what I should have said is I usually kill him via snake blood. Restore two life for every time I have been a damaged in battle. If this number has reached 16, I will die instead of healing. So, of course, you can just smack that all on the flow. Smack that. Give me some mouth. And um, that's usually how I kill him. It's pretty tricky, in my humble opinion, to actually just brute force his HP down. Not impossible, of course, but tricky. The lamb really helps with some of this positioning. Is it if I manually pull? So if I go here. Ah. So if I wanted this to attack first for, nope, for like a counter attack. There we go. Okay. I mean, that makes sense. Uh, so swipe is opened up. Deal one to all. It's going to kind of suck. This isn't a boss that really goes after my HP, so I don't think the Emperor of Festivals is super necessary. But we have the... numbers on board here, I think. To just kill him next rotation. Thanks for the life, bro. Imperius is going to be pretty good against this boss. Just because. Because they're so thick. They can also really struggle against certain bosses early on, but I don't think this is one of them. Although we do have a lot of special cards. Do we? Not really. I'll take that back. Okay, once again the Skinner is in hand. The Shivering Bundle. When I survive damage, grant me plus one attack per damage taken. Death gained borrowed life equal to my attack. So... Worst case scenario, this will give me one borrowed life if this gets, like, one tapped or just deleted from the void. But this could be a really good source of, like, sustain. Corrupted Cults. 7 mana 4 4. Whenever you draw your first creature card each turn, summon a base copy of it and grant it charge. And if your turn, kill it. Sorry. What? So we try this. I, felt, I had the theory that Shivering Bundle would be pretty good. We can grab this instead of Man with a Goat Head for our, like, defensive utility thing. Uh, we'll start with the Memorial, sure. We're kind of in a unique position with uh, the Lambs, where we can... <sighs> Why? Where we can push this thing around... This is going to one-tap this. Yikes. Uh. Alright. <laughs> uh, 
I hate this boss. Oh, say hello to the uncovered gold cap. We did fight him in one of the more recent videos. Uh, I think it went okay. Possibly. I can just attack, right? I don't need to actually do anything th silly here. I don't think. So the, the uncovered gold cap has three things that go off every single turn. One, the befuddling spores. This will... Pick a random target and then swap their health and their attack, which is why the Founder's Memorial was a 1k, 1k-o'd. The Wind-Up Punch. If I took no damage last turn, deal 3 to you directly. That's why we, we didn't drop a 1, so unfortunately we did get swat. Swacked? Swatted? Swat? Swat? And Fungi Flurry, the real question mark of this boss fight. Deal 2 damage. Fungi Flurry will trigger 2 to 3 times. So it's very important. Right now we have a minion-centric deck. So it's very important that we... This could have been really bad. I'm glad I hit the 2-2. Two -two. Holy shit. Um, it's really important that we always have something on the board. Always. We're going to try and play for the fuddling spores here. But hey, I'm about to get a bunch of temporary life. Oh, you hit the wrong one. But if this rolls only twice, that'd be good. Wow. Okay. Nailed it. GG, everybody. That went well. If I could draw my other mana pool for it, that'd be great. Farewell, little mummy friends. Oh, off the top. How does he do it? Great question. Inspired by the Helltaker music. It's super quiet right now, and this is super loud. Okay. I don't know how much the editing actually does. I mean, I know it does a lot because I can see the sound waves, but it still feels like YouTube makes everything super loud. I don't know why. It's the way it is. All right, for the mummy's first appearance, he did pretty good. The heck is this? Ritual Venture B, two mana. At the start of the turn, grant me fading. Choose two cards in your hand, switch their costs, lose one max mana. Wait a minute. Hold up. This could be hilarious. So, the downside is that I kind of have to play this when I draw it, but if I could swat... Marilia with literally anything else, it would be magnificent. <laughs> Not very good otherwise. Lose one max mana. Does this mean I can never get to 10? Man, I think I'm just going to take the Possessed Disciple because it's an unlock. That could have been funny. If I see it again, I might take it, just, you know, for the memes. But my concern, once again, no one drop, F. My concern is that if, if lose one max mana means I can never reach, if it's like that one ability where it just brings down my mana for one turn, like I had four, four, it got up to five, now it's down to four again, that's fine. But if I physically cannot reach 10 mana, then it's a huge problem. Because unless I hit exactly Marilia, it's over. I guess the only way to find out is to test it, but... 
All right, everyone say hello to the Hydrozoan hive mind. Hydrozoan hive mind spawns these little jellyfish every turn, and they do something. This one, counterattack deal two. If this kills a creature, deal two has another counterattack. Now, you can kill them. Ooh, that's interesting. I see a fun play. So you can kill them by not attacking, but they will deal their counter as damage, right? Creatures that could have attacked but did not deal their damage to the oldest jellyfish and take damage equal to its remaining counter. So this will deal four as a counterattack, which feels hashtag not worth it. Anyway, the funny thing we can do is we can eat this with the Mastodon Rider, become a 6-6, six, six, spawn a 2-2 two, two from its death, And when this dies, which, you know, hopefully it doesn't, but if it does, it will spit it back out. I feel kind of strong right now. What is this one? Deal one. If this kills, I gain three life. Uh, so we can actually have this attack first. Cool. That's such a good tip. Thank you, Kidavets. you think I would have realized that by now with all the games I've played, but... I thought they just had to, you know, grab them, rip the attack. And this is Angry Jelly, deal two. So this will be counter two. I guess you do the same thing again, right? You up front. Will you guys in? Cool. Good discussion. I want to play a card. We could do the Emperor of Festivals here and just start stacking our life, but also I can just do nothing. I'm vibing. Back in the day, the Hydrozo and Hive Mine used to, like, as you just dealt damage to it, this counter would go down. That was a lot of fun. And by fun, I mean strong. Don't get it twisted. I wouldn't say that Hydrozone Hive Mind was free back in the day, but it was pretty close. Although, to be fair, it's feeling pretty free right now. I'm going to put him up front. And ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Still don't need Marilia. Oh no. My lamb. My poor lamb. I also got quite a few uh, beetles from that. Because this thing was alive the whole fight. Well, I did say if it shows up again, I would do it. For science. Another one? Still is stone. Still is stone. The man mutters, holding a spear close to his chest. Before him graze a group of small, fuzzy creatures and their much larger mother. Soup of bones. Soup of bones. He says. He raises his spear and begins to charge. Which do you help him hunt? The mother. Wow. All right, another garbage turn one. You hate to see it. See, this is what's so good about the... Wow, I took seven? Damn. Uh, <laughs> this is what's so good about the Ravager Greater Patron. Or honestly, even just Ravagers in general. See? Man, that sucks. Farewell. That's the downside of Ritual Venture P. Okay. Probably should read what this guy does, because... I took three and I didn't like that. So he has Iron Carapace. Takes one less damage from all sources. Unfortunate. Knuckle Break. Counter Attack deal two to all attackers. Pain. And Wind Up Punch. If I took no damage last time, deal three. 
I can't keep taking three to the face, so we will swing. Go. Deal four. If this kills a creature, I gain one life. Good news, everybody. Good news, everyone. I have created a plague that will destroy all life on Azeroth. I knew. These are gonna die. These are just sacrifices for the altar. I don't even think I'm gonna swing with the a lamb. Yeah, I don't think I am. No, I don't think I will. I'm just gonna eat the fish. Yes. Nom, 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 nom. Okay. Have I drawn Marillia yet? I feel like I haven't. <laughs> I feel like there has been zero Marillia gaming. But that's okay. The the Zerga strat definitely ah oh, there she be uh definitely is punished by the Iron Carapace. Do I wait one turn so I can show what she does? Nah. No need to be in the turtle. If you know what I'm saying. What the f ten mana twelve twelve. When you play your first spell each turn, reduce my mana cost by one. I have a single. Fearless creatures gain more attack depending on the base max life of the enemy. Oh. You know what? <laughs> sure. What do I even. <sighs> sure. Well, I suppose the good news here is we have a second Ritual of Entropy target. <sighs> the start of your fourth turn, gain one max mana. All right, we are now in medium burden. This means that we will draw one less card at the start of the game, which is not great for us. This is the Prophet of Ruin, a gimmick boss. And I think it's a good thing we have a Filling Feast, because we're probably going to need it. If I had to guess. So here's how he works. He has five self-fulfilling prophecies, down to four. If, they spawn this little crow on my side, if that crow perishes, this will reduce the counter. When this counter reaches zero, both the self-fulfilling prophecy and the protective flock will be destroyed, and he will go down from 200 to 10 hit points. This is another boss that I have never killed the, the normal way. I mean, I guess the normal way is to let his mechanic go off, but you know what I mean. I've never gotten him down from 200 HP. Do I let this go? guess so. No, I should wait, right? So he has this uh, Rising Dread, which is what will kill the birds. The burbs. And hit my face. And he has Thunderstorm, which counterattack, if attacked by three or more creatures, deal three to all attackers. So you can attack with the birds and like some 1-1s one or whatever. Trigger this and kill the birds so they stop pecking your face. Which um, is quite tempting, to be honest. 
We have one more bird coming our way. And I'll heal after it looks like we're not taking any more damage. This is why we have two of them. Oh, hey, the brain drinker. What's up, bud? Um... Swing. Play this. And then we'll heal. Thanks to the gong, that goes off twice. Oh, look at that, our brain drinkers end at nine mana. How cute. Alright, GG. The Prophet of Ruin boss, like, as long as you aren't coming at him with, like, five hit points in your pocket, you are being chillin'. It's really just how much health do you bleed against this boss. And as the Empiricists, uh, we can prevent a lot of bleeding. Well, we're here for unlock. Wait a minute, what? And I have the Cultist unlock. This is the one that was bugged, which is what prompted the hotfix that broke, that unlocked a whole bunch of cards by accident. Chanting Cultus, replace a Chanting Cultus. What am I to do? Oh, hey, I have a turn one play. Nice. Well, good news, everyone. We might actually play the Brain Drinker. The Brain Drinker. So this is the Forgotten Warrior. I um don't really like this boss. I gotta be honest. Sixty-nine. Nice. He has the Sunlit Spear. Deal 5 damage, overkill damage, hits both the next creature and you directly. That sucks. This will be happen every two turns. Renew Divinity, if I took no damage last turn, restore 5 life. And the Firmament Bulwark, if I took 10 or more damage last turn, restore 10 life. What is this hand? I guess these are 3-3s. Three threes. And he's going to open up the White Void, which will destroy the entire board. So this guy can be a little tricky. Uh, once again, this is a boss about bleeding. I jumped up to five mana, so that's cool. Where is the ritual of entropy? Um, to me. What the fuck just happened? Team? Did I... Did it not work? Ah. Hey, Morelia. I wish I could move you guys on the board. But alas. That's exactly 10. Are you going to heal for 10 now? Please don't heal for 10. Please? Ugh. Uh... <laughs> That's not what I wanted to see. Right. Holy shit. Can I place this? No. That's unfortunate. <laughs> well, this sucks. I'm not sure what's worse. The spell not working or him healing for 10. I don't know. It's pretty bad either way. I guess we just keep chipping. Just keep swimming. Just keep swimming. Brain Drinker. Now the Brain Drinker will be dealing more than 10. 
but it's such a high number that I don't think it really matters. I want to play Marillia next turn, not this turn. I've never seen stats at this high. 23-16. I guess the Levi we had the Leviathan, didn't we? And the uh -huh. Okay, so this isn't entirely true. We've seen more attack, although not by much. All right, Morelia. So the enemy targets itself with all damage until your next turn. This is a super win con. <laughs> Playing this against Lil Wayne is hilarious. It'd be great if we could fight him, but... We'll see. Oh, he's going to kill himself. <laughs> uh, I just like that a lot, but hey. Draw your highest cost creature, then reduce your new highest in hand by one. I have almost 50 beetles. Let's roll. I have this in the pocket, so. Right, the living statue. You know, I guess this could be um, just stats for... The Mastodon. Oh. False prophet. An old man in a gilded robe approaches you. Give these people something to believe in, and I will uplift your soul. So heavy with horrors. The man says he is holding a small bowl and a knife. The blood in those veins is all I need for a quick. Miracle. He smiles. Six life is a lot to donate, but um, we have removed our burden down to light, which means we are going to be drawing full cards. So I'm happy. Not with this hand, but I'm happy. Besides that. Everyone say hello to the crumbling monuments. The crumbling monument has pincer punches. Deal left to the left. Deal one to the leftmost and rightmost enemy can hit the same target, and it can hit your face if there is nothing left on a sacrifice to the altar. He also has the Rage of the Earth. So when falling below 40 life and again at 20 life, destroy an ability to advance the other Rage Gauges by 2. There's a strat where we kind of just like ignore him. <laughs> Until these, you know, we ignore him, build up our mana, build up our board, and then like start swinging once these are opened. Is that the right play? I don't know. I'm kind of into the shivering bundle here, to be honest, team. Smack. <laughs> the shivering bundle is going to start slowly taking damage, but also gaining max HP because of the memorials foundry. I kind of don't want to play another card. Is that weird? That has to be weird. Weird though it be, is it raw? I don't know. I'm going to go with yes. We'll go with yes, it's wrong. Um, I don't think we let the... We, I'd rather take the HP, I think. From the Overlord, possibly. This is one of my favorite songs on the OST. So we have Sleeping Strike opening up, which will do AoE, I believe. Two to all. We can push him to the next tier, which I think gets rid of... Pincer punches? Kind of into that, though. What if I don't play a card? Is that ever incorrect? I don't think so. 
I think we're chilling. Okay, let's see what happens when I get the rage going. So sweep is happening, obliterate is happening. I'm taking one. I don't think we care. Do I want to eat something? I could eat the mana pool koi. Sure. Now I'm a 9-5. I'm the captain now. Well, have fun obliterating yourself. <laughs> Why are you hitting yourself? Why are you hitting yourself? Get rid of sweeping strikes. And um, that's, that's that, methinks. Because Morelli is about to hit this bitch for 17. Okay, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Before we do this, I want to play this. Choose two cards in your hand. Oh! <laughs> I know what's happening. Ah. So what's happening is uh, this. The Ancient Gong. Your spells that cost two or less are double casted. And uh, Ritual of Entropy costs two. So it switches the cost of the cards and then it switches it back. So I don't think I can actually use that card. Uh, so I should roll for something else. Oh, hey, the Ram. Grant me plus one health per attacking creature. Oh, interesting. Oh, that's the fabled Veldrada. Do I need another 10-10? Probably not. I don't think I do. Oh, hey, fellow Marilia Mar the Fabled. Fill your hand with random fabled cards. Reduce their cost to zero. I mean, that sounds fun. If nothing else. Okay, here we go. More unlocks. Gain one max mana. Hermit gain one more. This isn't really a card I want to play. It's not. But, uh... We made it. Is this Lowane? Again. For the third time. Welcome to the altar. Fourth time is the charm, as they say. Uh, I just realized I don't have a filling feast. And I don't know why. Didn't I have two of them? Well, anyway. Uh, this is my fourth time attempting this because Haru is a bit of a bitch. Fun fact, Haru is completely hard countered by the man with the goat head, which we did see in this run. I just didn't pick it up. Because honestly, I didn't think about it. But our current build actually suffers tremendously from this character. And it makes me kind of sort of sad. So what is happening? Nice. That is ruining my existence. Well, Haru, her main shtick is around these three abilities. Ice Mirror, which just opened up and attacked me, will deal damage directly to my face equal to the largest creature's attack. The Cycle, counterattack, if your opponent controls only one creature, kill it. And that's all wrapped around Unify. This coalesce all creature stats into the one with the highest attack. This kills all creatures 
and merges them into whoever has the highest attack. If there's equal attack, I think it's the leftmost. So what does all of this mean? Well, it means eventually, inevitably, we die. Also, there's Storm Gaze, where if they don't take damage, uh, they gain a spark and deal direct damage every single turn to the number of sparks. So if I don't have a turn one play, uh, I just take one every turn and that chips you away because I don't have a Filling Feast, which I thought I did. Which is kind of a problem. A lot of things here are kind of a problem. So our deck being countered by this really sucks. But um, I think there's a way. I think we can obey the regular gimmicks of the fight and it will all kind of work out. Maybe. Honestly, I... Okay, if I'm going to be honest, I don't think this is possible. I think this is a GG to no re. Uh, the deck just couldn't handle it. Because this is a deck full of big shit. Like, that's how I win. Big shit. And honestly, I don't have enough sustain to survive through shenanigans, I don't think. I might. I think that the dream is to get Marilia, like the biggest Marilia of my life, and get her to just ice mirror her face for a gazillion damage. I think that's the dream. Like, see, right here, I don't feel like I can take four. Like, I feel like even four is way too much damage. So what we can do is we can kill off the fish. Do I have any other sources of temp HP? I have two more. And, like, the worst part is the Possessed Disciple and the Macedon Rider, they don't allow for Cycle to kill. Because when they're unified, they mer they'll drop somebody behind. Maybe it's okay if it's just, like, if the Macedon Rider is alone, maybe it's okay. That wasn't a part of the plan. This thing can't attack. Sorry for the cut. I had to go check on something. All is well in the realm, except for whatever's going on here. This has been mildly disappointing. Also, the Shivering Bundle does nothing. But it is only a one attack, so maybe it's okay to play it. There's also a... Completely useless against Tyro. Maybe? Wait, hold on. Is it okay to do five? No. Man. I think Morelia is the, really the only out. And unfortunately, this is only 34 damage. According to my quick math. Is there a world where I can buff this? There isn't, is there? So we're about to be ice mirrored right now. If I don't play a card... This guy dies. If I do play a card, I take more damage. Joy. This would be possible with the Filling Feast, but I don't think I can do this. I kind of have to go now, don't I? I do. 
I need just as many stats as possible. Okay, we swing. We unify. Okay. Now we Morelia. Oh wait, do I swing first? It makes no difference, right? Morelia? Oh, I think I did it! Oh! Because 22 goes into... Pyro takes 22, takes 30. Why is this not 22? And this is going to her... We did it! Morelia, the mind turner, victorious. Wow. Could you imagine if I swapped that out for Morelia the Fabled? I would have lost this. The Acolyte's journey completed. Canest dissected the offerings of flesh. At last, their siblings culled from every field and forest. No one was left to call divine reason in to question. Mono blue, and on that screen, the high-pitched noise returned. Peculiar. Well, this was certainly a run. Uh, I would not recommend taking the Ancient Gong and Ritual of Entropy. At all. That, uh, that was a lesson well learned. Also, Merlia the Mind Turner is still one of the best win cons in the game. Thank you for your service. The Singing Celtis. That hotfix that unlocked half of the fabled catalog was the hotfix which fixed this guy. Free mana 1-1. One, one. Play, draw a card, gain borrowed life equal to its cost. Could you imagine drawing Merlia with this? Man. This is just a good card. Yeah, I'm into it. The Brain Slurper, a 5 mana 1 8. Whenever you draw a card, reduce its cost by my attack value. Huh. Not gonna lie, even at 1 attack, this is just value city. But if you could get it higher. That would be something. Also, if you Mastodon Rider this, the Mastodon Rider becomes a 5-12. <laughs> the Lively Statue. 5 mana, 1-7. End of turn, restore 1 health to my neighbors and move to the front line. Okay. This is like, um... A, a variant of the Lamb. The Dignified Disciple, a 2 mana 2-2. Two, two. Death, if your board was full, grant your creatures plus 5, plus 5. Wow. This is a red-blue thing if I've ever heard it. Although, I suppose the green deck fills the board all the time now with um, the Overlord cards. The Pass Down the Crown being actually usable. Okay. The Exalted Jester, a 2 mana 2-3. Two, Summon, gain 2 max mana. Death, lose 3 max mana. Ah. So this is a... Oh, this song is an absolute hit. This is like a double-edged sword where you can jump forward briefly, but when it dies, you get cut back. That probably feels awful. It could be interesting. The Physician of Festivals, a 3-mana 2-1. Double cast all spells that did not start in your deck. Sort of turn out a bandage to your hand. A 1-mana, fading gain 1 borrowed life. Double cast all spells that didn't start in your deck. The only card that immediately comes to mind for this is the Sylvan Overlord thing that adds a random Sylvan spell to your hand. That sounds insane. These are the unlocks. Not bad. Not too shabby. 
Not too shabby. How are we looking on the blue? We're missing one. We almost have it. Look how shiny they are. We also have the doppelgangers where you can get a free copy of a spell. Huh. Uh, so what I was thinking of is over here in the Sylvans. If you play a spell, grant me a plus one, plus one, even if I'm in your hand. That's some good synergy, too. But, uh... Where is it? This one. The Redhead Tramper. Create a Sylvan random card in hand as the Overlord. Combining those two could be really spicy. Like, supremely spicy. But, that's my friends. How's Red doing? Red's missing the most, it looks like. Yeah. Well, there's quite a few of things that were also accidentally unlocked. But thank you all for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the blue deck shenanigans. Haru almost knocked me out. I feel like it would have been smoother if I had the filling piece, but obviously we still made it happen with Morelia being a Giga Chat. It turns out having two win cons was um, definitely a good idea. <laughs> two big 10 drops to finish it in one, well, two technically smooth rounds but thank you all for watching i do hope that you enjoyed thank you to the patrons and the channel members who support the channel i greatly appreciate you if you would like to see that channel feel free to join the description down below and i will see you next time i suppose it's time for mono red bye